Well, hello everybody and welcome to First Baptist West Facebook Live. We're excited to be coming to you live from the offices of First Baptist West. And again, as always, Elizabeth's desk. She does a great job of preparing things for us. And uh, I always have to keep looking over my shoulder, make sure uh, Texas Longhorns doesn't pop up all of a sudden. So I've been watching it tonight and she did well just by leaving the First Baptist West. But anyway, <laughs> we're uh, glad that you joined in. We're a day late as what we normally would do on a Wednesday night, but because of uh, technical difficulties that we've been having, we are now going to be doing this tonight on Thursday night. So we are glad that you went ahead and joined us. So uh, let's go ahead and get the program started. Want to introduce and bring in to you my sidekick. Uh, <laughs> co-host. Co-host. All right, Kaylee. Uh, this is my sidekick, but she wants to be known as the Co-host. Co-host. All right. So there you go. See, John's even See, John's got your got name it right. on it. There you go. All right. Well, so how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. I'm real tired. Yeah, I should say you came in a little tired tonight. Yeah. What, what's going on? Um, my one of my coworkers are uh, is it PCSing or is it, but her and her wife are moving next oh, week. Okay. So it's me and my other coworker that will be left running our department. So we've been working a lot trying to over do everything so we won't fall super behind. Oh, there you go. So you get piled on, right? Is that what yeah. they call it? We, yeah. we call it piled on. Yeah. All right. Well, trying to go. move houses and stuff. It's great. <laughs> so I was about to ask you, how's the COVID and stuff striking you? But I guess um, moving is probably worse than that. But yeah. How's well, COVID doing? Well, it's it's definitely, there's been an influx of like dispute cases because that's what I do. Uh -huh. So it's just, it's there's been a lot of people and a lot of them are cases that we deny up from because... Yeah they're lying but <laughs> but i was actually talking about how it affected you at work well yeah but i mean no i mean like there's been like yeah. it's just been like a lot of, a lot we have like 30 on. 40 cases yeah. filed a day and right. just like it, it gets to be a lot yeah so a lot of work huh yes well good good i'm glad glad you're making it tonight though yes. glad you're here yeah. with us so <laughs> now I, I do want to also talk about uh the gift mm -hmm. that we gave keith yeah. Uh, you know, was, he was so amazed by it. He loved it. Yeah. So I want to know, and you sent me a picture, and I wish I, we should have put it on tonight, of where that, that stadium is. And where is it? Tell everybody where you allowed him to put it. Well, I technically didn't allow him, but he put it up on his mantle, straight up in the center, and you see it right when you walk in the house. So. Does he have it plugged in so the lights um, are on? He has to get an extension cord to turn it on because but, he was like you need to wait until i can plug it in to send harold a picture <laughs> but i figured you'd wanted to know that it was in the middle of the mantle right where he said he wanted it <laughs> okay now when are y'all getting married march 20th march 20th okay so what I, i'm impressed that it's there now that's okay <laughs> what i'm really going to be impressed with is you get mar march 20th yes. is when you get back and say on march 30th is it still going to be there? That's the true story. I will probably let it be because it doesn't have like a huge Viking symbol. Like it's just like, it's not too bad. If it were like something huge and purple, I probably would have a bigger, bigger <laughs> issue with it. It's okay right now. Well, I it may you, eventually find a new place, but I'm fine right now. <laughs> well, I, I, I think what, 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 when, when we were searching for him she a gift. Walked in. Yeah, when we were searching for a gift, uh -huh. One of the things, I found something else mm -hmm. that I'm going to get you as a pre-wedding gift gift. Oh, goodness. And it's it's pretty cool. So uh, I, I, I'm excited. I can't wait to get it for you. I, I may order it early and get it way early. <laughs> because I'm real excited about it. And that way he can hang it up in his house until you get there. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. But okay. yeah, so everything's going all right, though, huh? Yes. You, busy, you, but it's, it's going. Have you started any wedding plans yet? Yes. Yes, my friend, my coworkers freaked me out thinking that I was behind, and so I like did a lot of some like the bigger things. You're behind. Yeah, cause like um, Jade got me this book, and but it's based off of like having twelve month, twelve plus months to plan, and I oh, it was like eight, so they're like you're three months behind, and oh. so I yeah. But I'm, well, we've got all some right. of the bigger things it, out of the way. We're taking engagement pictures on Saturday. So. Oh, oh, well, congratulations yeah. on that. So things are going to start getting really exciting from here. Yes. All right. Well, good. All right. Well, so everything else is all right. Family's all good. We're, we're getting there. Okay. All right. Well, good. Good. Glad, glad you made it tonight. Don't get to talk too bad about you since you're here. We only talk about you behind your back when you're not here. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but we're, we're glad you glad you're back. That's two weeks in a row. So it is. I'm impressed. I'm I impressed. Know. So and you know what? After tonight, we only have two more shows. 
I don't know if you can talk me into them. Okay, see if you can come back. We'll, we'll see if you'll be here. <laughs> we'll we only see. Have, folks, we only have two more shows, man. This is uh, number three and counting and down to two and one. And then we'll, we'll try to have some special things for you on the on our final night uh, as we wrap up season one. But, hey, everybody can go back on YouTube and they can watch the binge the watch the season. entire first season all they want. All 20-something episodes, I think, is what we had. Not bad for a group that was only going to be here for a couple of weeks, right, John? <laughs> not, not too bad, not too bad. Well, let's get on with our show. So, Katie, why don't you introduce what we're going to be doing next? Our next thing is the three things that you need to know. Hit it, John. All right, so we have three things that you should know here at First Baptist West. The first thing is our Sunday School small group started back up last Sunday morning. And man, I tell you, it was really exciting to get to walk around the classrooms upstairs and see all the people that were there. We were really excited about it. And, and uh, people really seemed to be excited about it as well. And I know some of you uh, didn't get to come and be a part of it, but... Uh, so that you'll know that we do have all of our Sunday school classes or uh, several of our adult classes and our youth classes are doing uh, the uh, watching it on Zoom. And so uh, we're trying to do both of those so that you can have it if you're here or if you want to watch it on the Zoom. So we're really excited about it. So we want to encourage you to come and be a part of our Sunday school small groups uh, this Sunday morning. Now we're going to start them again at 945 and they'll go to 1045. So come and join us for our small groups. Again, it was really cool having so many people in and it went very well. Looking forward to more. So that's number one. Number two, this Sunday evening, we're going to be having our back to school prayer rally. And I want to encourage you to please bring your family uh, to, to the church at six o'clock on Sunday night. We're going to be gathering together. We're going to have a, a prayer rally. We're going to have a, a great time. We're going to be praying for our schools, praying for our families. And it's really, really important uh, to have you uh, come and pray for us and pray with us. We're going to have some testimonies. We're going to have some worship time. Uh, but we're focusing on family this year, focusing on our students because they're going to be really challenged with everything that's going on. Then, of course, we will be dealing and, and focusing with our, uh, our teachers. And so let me put a note out that if you are a teacher and you have not gotten in contact with us to fill out a prayer card, we would like for you to do that because what we're going to try to do is throughout the year be praying for specific teachers. So if you would fill one of those out or call the office, we'll have one filled out for you. Then Sunday morning, as you come into our worship services, both of them, we're going to have those prayer cards ready for you so that you'd be able to uh, to know that you're going to be prayed for. So please fill one of those out uh, or call the office and let us know and we'll get those ready uh, for uh, Sunday night. That was number two. Number three is our Wednesday night Bible studies. They're starting back up and we're very excited about that. They're going to be coming on September the 9th. And we'll meet here. We'll have our meal. Of course, we're starting back our meals. Those will be at 530. And we'll be serving from 530 to, say, uh, 615. And then our Bible studies and everything will start off on Wednesday night. Now, Wednesday night, on September 9th, the first thing we want to talk about, of course, is our Awana program. We are putting our Awana program back together. And we're going to be doing that at 630. Now, we're going to start tomorrow, or which will be today, because since it'll be Thursday, we're going to be allowing... Uh, registration to begin. Now, one of the things that we're doing differently this year is we're going to be allowing uh, you to register for being here at the church, or if you want to do it virtually, uh, you'll be able to do it in your home, but we're going to be doing it kind of like what we did with our Vacation Bible School, where the opening ceremony and different things throughout the night will be a lot to be live, so you can join us on Facebook, and your kids and your, your you as a family can join in and be a part of a one live with us uh, during the evening. But that way, if you're not comfortable about coming here, then you can still be a part of our WANA program. So we want to encourage you to register online, and you can do that anytime now. If you'll just go on to our, our uh, webpage, and you can register for the WANA program. And so on there, we'll have everything that you need to order for books, uh, uniforms, anything else that you need, and you'll be able to go on our webpage. Also, 
and be able to pay your dues and pay for the books, anything you can do that online as well. So our WANA program is kicking off. The last thing with that is as you see on your screen, volunteers are really needed. We, we want to make our WANA program the best we can make it. So we're asking for any of our members, if you would like to be a part of our WANA program, please contact the office or contact Carrie, and we're, we're going to be signing up for that. So uh, that starts September the 9th at 6.30, so uh, volunteers are needed. The second part of that is with our youth recharge. Our youth will be having their worship time uh, that night, so we want to encourage you to come and be a part of our student ministries here. They'll be doing a worship service, and John will be breaking them into small groups and different things. So every Wednesday night, our youth will be doing uh, recharge. So students, come and join us. Uh, here on, on Wednesday night as well. And the last thing with that is that our women's and men's Bible studies will be going on at 6.30 as well. So we'll have break up into our women's Bible study. They have a good special study going on. Our men will be doing a special study as well. And those usually last from about 6.30 to 7.30. Our WANA program will go from 6.30 to 8. So that way we'll know that all of our adult studies and, and groups are out and ready to pick up the kids at 8 o'clock when the WANA program is over. So we're really excited about that and looking forward to Wednesday nights picking up again, September 9th. We'll start our meals at 5.30, and if you want to be a part of that, the meals are $4 a piece or up to $16 for a family. That if you have a family of more than that, then you can come still for $16 is all you'll be charged for that. So come and join us on Wednesday night starting on September 9th. We're really excited. So those are the three things that you should know. Now, we're getting ready to go to uh, a special uh, segment of our program tonight, and it's Where Are They Now? And we're going to go to all the way to Hawaii, and we're going to be uh, inter interviewing uh, Jill Wallace. Many of you remember her. She was our receptionist at one time, and so we're real excited about that. So let's go ahead. We recorded that so that their time is so different from ours, so they're going to be interviewing, and, and so Jill will be joining us. So let's go ahead and go to that, and we hope you'll enjoy getting to see Jill and, and the kid. All right. Well, hey, everybody. Thank you for uh, staying with us, and uh, we're excited about tonight's uh, Where Are They Now? We've had a few episodes of that during our programs uh, this summer. And so we're really excited about tonight because uh, someone that's really special to me and many of y'all know her. Some of you that are new have not uh, met Jill, but this is Jill Wallace. And uh, Jill, how are you doing? I am doing wonderful. Good, man. It's good to see you and get to hear from you again. I miss everybody so much. <laughs> well, for everybody that doesn't know, Jill used to, Jill and Mark and Emma Girl used to be members here. And Jill was our receptionist for a while, but she's one of the uh, uh, many that I've had since I've worked here. So I'm going to try to get some inside scoop here about what makes it so hard. Well, hi, Emma Girl, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. So we're going to try to get the inside scoop here as to why, why I've gone through so many receptionists since I've been here. Jill, is it, is it, was it that bad? <laughs> <laughs> no, I loved it. All you right. just gotta have you just gotta have that like ESP. You gotta just know how to read you. <laughs> you got you gotta have that here he comes, I know what he's thinking kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, I, I used to always call you remember I used to always call you radar. You of course yep. didn't get the reference when I first gave it out, but <laughs> so, yeah, I was a little too young for the whole radar thing. Yeah, she she was good. You were good at being radar. You just didn't know who I was talking about. Yeah. But uh, so uh, Jill was our receptionist here. How long were you a receptionist, Jill? Oh man, um, almost three years, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So so you lasted a while. It wasn't just here, and then you couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> I stayed. Yeah, yeah. You well, stayed you, with us. You know, I cried when I left. Yeah, it, it was it was tough to, to lose you. You did a great job. But for all those, uh, Jill, uh, husband Mark is in the military and they they were here, stationed here, and then they were called away. Uh, and of course, then they have their daughter, Emma Girl. I called her Emma Girl is always what I called her. And so uh, I don't even know if she even still remembers anything about Lawton and First West and this pastor or not. But anyway, now she, she has to remember because I'm right in front of her, right? <laughs> So where where did y'all go from here? Re refresh everybody. Where did you left from here and you went? Yes, we left there and we went to Fort Lee, Virginia. Okay. And how long uh, were you there? 
we were there for almost three years, almost to the, to the exact day. Um, and that was a blessing because it just, it wasn't fulfilling us in any way. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, we just got there. Um, we didn't find much. We never like clicked with any people, um, any churches. It was just kind of lonely and um, putting ourselves out there. We didn't really get much in return. So it was pretty hard. So then you were there for what, three years, did you say? And then, then you got the, the post to go to Hawaii, huh? Hawaii. Now, how long have you been in Hawaii? Uh, we got our house here at the end of January of this year. So okay. we got here just in time for a little bit of rain and COVID. So yeah. you, you got to paradise in time for the COVID break, huh? Yes. <laughs> so, so, so you get to go to uh, go to Hawaii and get to be in the land that, of, of, of blessing, but yet you don't get to enjoy much of it, huh? No, it's it's beautiful. Um, just I don't know. Every every day is like a rainbow. And it's just like, and I tell Emma all the time, just sitting on the porch, she's like, mom, I'm bored. Like, what are we supposed to do? I'm like, nothing. You sit here and you look at the sky and you look at the trees and you see the rainbows. And I said, it's just beautiful. It's just God's creation. And just seeing rainbows every single day, like multiple rainbows, like looking across your street after a mist of rain and you have two rainbows over the house. It's just like, and what do I always tell you? What's a rainbow? God's promise. Amen. So, you know, going through, coming here in the COVID, seeing all the rainbows is just enough. You know, yeah. it's the promise that this will all be over and paradise is going to be awesome. Oh, man. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're talking you my you stuff. Yeah, you're talking my stuff there. Uh, as a matter of fact, I joked with you and said that, uh, I actually petitioned to get to come down to Hawaii to uh, do a remote uh, location shoot. But because of the uh, budget amount of money that I have for this program, which is absolutely zero, uh, the church didn't okay me of the travel expenses. So we get to do it over this. So anyway, and I thought I'd love you had to... a good congregation there. Oh, they are great, but they didn't okay yeah. my budget travel expenses to Hawaii. Uh, well, when, but... when this is all said and done, I'm going to start a GoFundMe. <laughs> to so get me we're to gonna Hawaii. make we're gonna make this happen <laughs> oh man yeah but but as we were talking about before uh before we actually went on to the program here uh i would just get to come down there spend two weeks in isolation and then come out and go back into isolation because they're not letting you do anything there right yeah that's true but I mean, you can't be good all the time. Yeah. You know? so, so what's it like down there with the COVID? <laughs> what are they allowing you to even do? Um, well, we were open for a little while. The, mm. the, this just happens, I believe, last Monday. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Okay. We just got a mandatory mask. Okay. So we have to wear a mask no matter where we go, um, outside even, um, which is crazy. So you said um, you said though the the beaches are closed the and beaches are closed. Um, you have to be in the water, so water activities are okay. Um, you can walk on the beach, but you have to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. um, can't be more than three people together, and you have to be moving if you stop to congregate or anything like that. You know, it's a no go. But oh, okay. um, yep, hiking is beautiful. All that's shut down. Oh, the um, hiking too, huh? Yes, all of our hiking trails. Um, yeah. Okay. Everything. And it, it's just everything outdoors. Everything that you want to come here to see. Hey, right. Everything down. that I want, want to go to Hawaii for would yeah. not be there. No. Yeah. Well, And okay. the museums and stuff like that are still open with, you know, your six foot oh, minimum okay. with your mask. But still, you don't want to go to museums you want to see yeah. the beautiful land that's absolutely absolutely yeah so how, how's the family adapting to hawaii before the COVID? how, how was that going for y'all um we loved it really uh yeah we got here and it was january so january, january well, 8th. it's cold to me 
my uh, husband and daughter were in shorts and long sleeve shirts. And here I am in <laughs> jeans and sweatshirts, huh? Yeah. And everybody's looking at me like that woman is crazy. Why does she have so many clothes on? It's in Hawaii. So, so what, were, what was the temperature there that was so cold? Um, it was like, I don't know, it was like 60. 64, 65. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was so there, there was cold. No wonder they were looking me. at you. Yeah. It was pretty cold. It was, it was cold. So, my girl, so, how are you adjusting to being down there? How do you like Hawaii? I really like Hawaii. Do you? Mm -hmm. were, were, were you in school there? Did, did they cut school early or how did they do school this year for y'all um, or last year? Since I came here and we had to get our stuff, I, it was like, how long was I out of school for? You didn't go back to school till February because we have okay. to have an address. Oh, okay. Right, right. We have to have a residency and it took a little while to get the house ready and everything. So she didn't start school till February. So she was out of school for almost a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And then and she then went, I finally went to school. Mm -hmm. I was in school for like almost a month, I'd say. Almost two months. Almost two months. And right. then uh, COVID hit and then I couldn't go back to school. Yeah. Okay. So are, are they are they planning on letting you go back to school anytime soon? Yes. Um, they're supposed to start Monday kind of face to face every other day, but that got switched to virtual. So she starts Monday virtually. Um, so uh, so they're, not, not, they're not doing any location school. It's, uh, it's all virtual. Yep. So, well, it's going to be virtual until they lift what is going on right now. So when oh, okay. the governor decides to lift this freeze, um, he's guessing the end of the month. Okay. Um, then they're going to start with like a certain letters of the alphabet. So us being okay. W, we're in group B. So she'll go um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday to school. And then Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday would be at home virtual okay. learning. And then next, and then the next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, virtual. Yeah. Oh, so they go every other week like that. So every other day, yeah, every okay. other week. Right. And okay. Good. We just met the teacher yesterday, and they've got everything set in stone. Everything's amazing. She got a computer. Um, everything's like pinned and logged and bookmarked, and I got it easy. I am like so excited <laughs> for this year. <laughs> well, good. As long as I don't have to teach her math. So well, I might be calling you. I started to say we can we can zoom some lessons. We yes. can zoom some lessons now that we now that we know that Zoom address, we we will be able to do that. So so how how's Mark doing? Mark, on the other hand, yeah, he loves it. He loves Hawaii in itself. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, with work and everything, he likes um, not having snow. Yeah, he loves not having snow. I must say. Oh, praise the Lord! He likes tonight. not having the cold. Virginia yeah, wasn't yeah. good to us, was it? <laughs> it was That's bitter. Oh, um, but so, like so, every other, like every other job, you know, you're not always happy with your work. Is he doing yeah. some of the same stuff he did when he was here in Oklahoma? No. <laughs> oh no. Okay. No. I don't think this poor guy has stuck with anything at any duty station. I think they have switched him every time. Oh wow, that's got to yeah. be tough. Got to be tough. So. He's doing a lot of um, like artillery work, mechanic work right now. Okay. Um, okay. Being here, um, some airborne stuff. Um, but yeah, so a lot okay. of people are leaving. It's prime time for moving right now. So a lot of people are leaving and right. he's having to cover. So he, his stress of life right now is covering other people's jobs until they get new people to replace Right. I, I, I understand that. So what about you? Are, are you getting to, to stay at home and, and school yeah. and be a teacher now, right? Yeah, that's not really my calling, but yes. <laughs> you know, I have, I have a feeling there's a whole lot of parents right now are just saying, okay, yeah, this isn't my calling. <laughs> no. So, so they now know no, that teaching I, um... to me has been a calling. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's work, like to all, especially at Perspectus West, I know all the homeschool moms there. Oh my goodness, kudos to every last one of them, yeah. especially having multiple kids. I only have this one. 
Oh my do, goodness. Do, do you have do you have parent teacher conferences with with yourself quite a bit now? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's most of the time in the bathroom with the door shut and yeah, talking to myself, a little bit of yelling. You may hear a slam, but there's no holes, so that's good. No. Well, Emma it's girl, not that bad. Is, is, is Emma girl, is she is she your favorite teacher? <laughs> Say yes. Because you're going to be with her for a while. Sure. Do you like me or dad better? Oh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ask that. What'd you say? You said as a dad. As a teacher. <laughs> oh, as a teacher. <laughs> good, good. So, so you've been over there. I, I, do Do you kind of have an idea how long you might be there before they transfer you out? Is it another two, three year type thing? It's another two two years at least. Okay. Um, will be one year in January, and then two years after that. So two and a half right now. Okay, so you, you yeah. do have some time left in Hawaii. Yes, and I have two brand new nieces. Oh, congratulations. And I'm in Hawaii. So I so am like, I am ready to be back in the mainland. Oh, like I I'm I'll ready bet. to get off this island already. I'm like, <laughs> I want to see them. I want to hold them. Why does all this stuff happen when I go away? Yeah, right. There you go. I understand. So, so as far as uh, how God's working in y'all's life right now, is there some things that you you see that God's actually still working and and connecting to you pretty much? I think since we've came here, yes. Um, a lot of things happened in Virginia, just life and growing. Mm -hmm. um, just with me and Mark, uh, me and the kids. Um, you know, we have the Mark's three kids as well. Right. Um, they're all doing great. Are they good? Um, I was about to ask yeah. them here in a minute. Good. Yeah. Jordan's got an apartment in Michigan. She moved back home. She's oh, okay. been working at Home Depot now for three years. Wow. Okay. Um, taking care of herself. I'm really proud of her. She, good. you know, that typical stepmom and stepdaughter situation she's really grown and has stepped up and yeah Good. i'm very proud of who she's becoming um yeah. sometimes it just takes that that snip in the bottom you know just to right. push her out and get her going and yeah she's doing okay. amazing and both of the boys dylan graduated last year mason graduates this year okay okay and very good they're both um military bound Oh, okay. Are they yeah. going to go to the Army? Um, Dylan wants to go Air Force. Okay. And Mason's thinking Army, but he's now changing more Air Force because right. of their dad. Their dad's like, Air Force, you know, you get more, um, what do they call it, more more cushion. You know, you get the hotel, you get the hotel in the Air Force. You don't get the barracks. <laughs> I, I hear, I hear a lot of people yeah. talk about the Air Force like that. Yeah, <laughs> of course, so I wouldn't know because I got Air Force people, and I, 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 I I'm not involved <laughs> in that. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm so, excited to hear that that you guys are doing well, and I love visiting with you. I loved having you here with us at at First West and here in the office with us every day. And and I know you did a great job for me. You did a great job for our church and. Uh, uh, through some some kind of difficult times, but you did a super job for us. And uh, I just wanted to, uh, as we're kind of winding down our program, we're just three more to go. Then I thought, well, I'd really like to get you on our program and let people see you and see Emma Girl and Mark and and see how things yeah. are going. And and uh, we're just real excited about it. Uh, is there anything you'd like to share before we wrap this thing up? I told you I wouldn't keep you long. I could talk to you for an hour, but I know I, I could that. too. Um, no, just, um, I don't know. I could cry right now. <laughs> just, uh, First Baptist West was great for us. Um, it just came to us in a time that we desperately needed it. Right. And, um, you guys were a godsend to us and still are. Right. Um, I mean, we found some churches that we like here. Um, they've been great, even though we've, you know, have to do it virtually. Right. But, um, right. you know, everything compares to my home <laughs> and my heart. Right. And I do. I miss the staff. I miss my Tuesday morning women coming in, getting me my hugs. Right. They still do um, that. Just yeah. you don't get to be the recipient of it now. I know. And I miss it. <laughs> well, um, all right. 
Yeah. And the bus kids calls. I just, I miss it all. I really do. Yeah. Well, we miss you and, and, and I hope you know how we all feel about you and how I felt about you yes. having you in my, as my friend and, and the worker here at the church on my staff and you did a great job and loved Emma girl and Mark. And uh, we, we just wanted to get back with you and see where you are now and uh, take some time to visit with you. So I appreciate well, you doing you. this with me. And uh, do you mind if I take a minute and pray over all you guys real quick? Absolutely. Um, I want to add something too. I am. Um, okay. Don't want to get into too much of health issues. Okay. But um, I just had some tests done. Um, if everybody could maybe pray for me. Um, some biopsies came back for some, uh, I think it's called adenoma cells on some polyps that I had. Um, so I have to keep that adjusted. Um, they were cancerous. It's not my first go around. I've had it before um, okay. in my thyroid. So I know what's going to happen. I'm ready for it. I've been through it, but you know, just God's hands. Amen. And well, I'm not worried because yeah. I, tr I trust in him, but yes, well, I would absolutely. We'll definitely be praying for you with that one as well. Thank you for yeah. sharing that with us. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me, let me pray with you, Jill. Father, in Jesus name, we come to you and we thank you for your blessings. And God, we thank you for allowing us to spend some time with Jill and Emma girl, and even getting to see Mark for a moment before the program started. And, and God, I just pray your blessings on them. I thank you that they're doing well. I thank you that they sense your presence in their lives. And, and Father, I just pray that you would continue to use them there where you have them. And God, you never place us somewhere by accident. There's always a purpose. And Lord, I just pray that you would fulfill that purpose through this family. And God, I pray for Jill as she shared the situations that are going on with her now, that Lord, you would um, just continue to strengthen her body and her spirit, give her peace through this time, and that, God, you would be able to bring healing to her body, and that, Father, she would be able to get through this uh, doing well. And I pray, Father, that they would continue to seek your, your wisdom, your peace, and, and your, your comfort. And, Father, I just thank you for keeping them in my life, and, uh, Lord, I, I just enjoy getting to visit with them, so I pray favor on them, and it's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, Jill, thank you uh, for joining with us tonight. And I know everybody's going to be excited to get to see where you are and how things are going for you guys. And Emma girl, thank you for hanging out with us today and hope you'll do well in school. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Well, we'll talk to you all a little bit later and uh, God bless you. Same. Pardon me. For everybody, my phone number is still the same. Okay. Same <laughs> number. We'll, we'll get yep. back with Me's you. So, anyway. Well, thanks everybody for joining into this part. We'll now go over to, uh, for our, our Bible study and hope you, that you'll enjoy that time. And we again, appreciate Jill and Emma girl for hanging out with us tonight. So we'll, we'll see in just a few minutes. Okay. Thank you. All right. And that'll be the end of the program, but, uh, okay. that's how we'll do it. So are y'all doing okay though? Everything yeah. all right? Yeah, we are. Everything is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, well, it started, I, I sure it started in it started in Virginia, and that was the that was the struggle of life. Mm, and okay. coming here, yeah, our eyes are open. I see things, I hear things. You know, I'm channeling, and I don't think I've ever really fully have done that since probably Oklahoma. Yeah, well, I so, want to encourage you, Jill, to to stay focused on that and and mm -hmm. to get you know how I feel about getting in the Word, reading and. Yeah uh praying and then stay stay connected as much as you can to your church if, you know whatever yeah. church it is and um and then you can even join in here of course it, you know wouldn't be live because you don't want to join us live at your place <laughs> you can go to our youtube channel and, and watch our services and be a part of that as well but i really we encourage could. you to get connected with a place there have you found a place yet that's pretty good um we've life. been yeah, we've been checking in. It's a Miliani Baptist Church. Okay. It's a it's just a town real close to Wahiwa. Um it's a little bit more it's different. Right. Um more old school old hems, um, which uh -huh. I truly dearly love. Right. Um, right. you know, the one that the ones that get you. <laughs> and um it's just it's different because you know it's it's Hawaiian. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So you hear you hear words and you are learning different words, and right. it, it's all it's all a whole different. It's just I don't know. It it was only a two time thing, and everything else is virtual. Really? So yeah. it's 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 weird and odd to say you know if I fully like it. In order for me to feel a church, I need to be in there. I need to yeah, listen right. to the music and listen to it and just the feeling, you know, that you have in your body and your heart. And yeah, just this virtual thing is not pulling me into much. You know, I had some people um, because we've been back in worship for uh, several weeks now, but we started Sunday with our, our Sunday school small groups. Uh, okay. For the first time, and some people show, came to that that hadn't been coming at all, and they were saying, you know, we we kind of, we like the virtual, we liked uh, being able to get up and sit around and then go into church, and then we did our Zoom Sunday school classes, um, and they said, well, we, we kind of like, well, it's going to be okay going back, but uh, when they said when we got here and sensed it, said, oh, it was it was amazing to be back, yeah. so. They were thinking it was going to be okay to be back, but there's just, like you said, there's just something about being there that it really is. makes a difference. Yeah. Wow. Just some, something about the house. Yeah. It just it gets you. Yeah. Well, listen, if y'all need anything, you, you, you let me know, okay? And I'll okay. keep up with you on Facebook and stuff. And uh, okay. if there's anything I can do, you, you, you messenger. I'm, are you on messenger? I am. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I guess so. That's how I've communicated with you. Yep. <laughs> so, but if you need something, you, you message me. Okay. Okay. I and I should be that. praying for you guys. Okay. All right. well, Jill, thank wondering. you again for doing this. I, I, I was so excited when you said yes, and you'd be able to do it. It means Why God would to have I, you on. No. <laughs> you don't but, say no. That's just the bottom line. Well, I, I know, I know our people are going to enjoy watching, watching this part. Yeah. They're going to be good to see you again. Okay, well, listen, y'all be good. I've got to go. Emma, girl, good. love you, and y'all have a good day. Have, have fun at school when it starts, okay? Okay. And I, I I need to send you some of my mints, send you a bag of mints or something from like we used to have. Do you remember that? Do you remember us giving the mints? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, listen, y'all, ladies, be good, and uh, love y'all, and if you need anything, holler at me. Yep, we love you all, too. Sounds okay, good. Okay, thanks, for guys. Me. See y'all later. All right, right. bye-bye. Hey, everybody. I hope that uh, you just enjoyed that last segment visiting with Jill. I know that it was good getting to visit with her and Emma Girl, and we were real excited to uh, to have them on tonight. But I wanted to share something with you in our Bible study time that's really been impressing upon my heart. Uh, and, and it's dealing with, with the church through this COVID-19 uh, outbreak and the things that are going on. And, and even prior to then about the, the need of the church. And I always ask the question, if it's God's will that all men be saved, why is it that the church isn't full? Why do people not attend church? Why does it not seem to be? And, and so I remember that question being posed. I read an article. And what they basically came up with is that the, the church to a lot of people today is not relevant. It's not relevant to them. And I began to think about that, and that's to the lost world. But also I'm looking around, and I'm, I'm also seeing that maybe that's the same way with the church, to the Christians, that maybe the church just isn't relevant to our lives. And so that made me look back to a verse of Scripture that I want to share tonight. And it's found in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. And starting at verse 19, says, Paul says, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, and I might win Jews. And to those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without the law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means win some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partakers of it, with you. Now, what Paul is saying here is that, that we can't keep the church as it is to make people be a part of it. That he says, I am willing to do whatever it, is ta it, it takes to get people to recognize about the church. 
And so if it's not relevant to, to the world, then what I want to encourage us to do is to look and see what can we do. Because many churches have answered that question is, uh, by not being relevant by, by two ways. One, that some have said, well, we'll just change it and do it like what society wants. Whatever the world wants will become that way. And I'm convinced that the church is to be the church. But then there are others who say, well, we'll do nothing and just keep it chugging along the way it's always been. And it's worked that way for the last 50 years, so why would we change it? So Paul here is addressing an issue that, that I believe is very important to the church. It's so, it's, it's so important that starting Sunday morning over the next several weeks, I'm going to be teaching a, and preaching a series of, of messages that's entitled, Making the Church the Place to Be. So I hope you'll join us on uh, Sunday morning as I begin that. But I want to ask a couple of questions here uh, to us so that we at First Baptist West and you at home, wherever you may be attending church, might be able to respond to this. Uh, because my heart is to see the church continually bringing people in. We should be reaching out. So the two questions I want to in the next few moments is this. First one is our desire to see people come to Jesus. Paul was saying here that that's what his desire was, to bring people to the saving grace of Jesus Christ, that he would be willing to do whatever it took to be able to do that. This should be paramount to who we are. Do, we, do you know that we don't have to do this? And what I mean by that is, I'm saved. Paul says, we're free. I'm saved. I know I'm secure. I know where my eternity is going to be. So I don't have to do anything. But should I want to? Our eternal souls do not rest on this but someone else's might. So the question is, do we really want to see people come to Jesus? Be in the condition that we're in. I've told you many, many times in the church that I or you or anyone else who's in Christ is not better than anyone else. We're all sa sinners saved by grace. But what we are is we're better off because we have Jesus Christ and our eternity is set. So our hearts should be for aching for souls to be saved and lives changed, families healed, and relationships restored. And as a member of this church or even those of you who are not, what is your heart feeling today about the lost? Paul says, I'm willing to become all things to all men so that some might be saved. The second question I want to ask before I close out is, will you continue to become all things to all men? Just like Paul was saying. Now this doesn't mean we're going to transgress the law. Doesn't mean we're going to sidetrack the Word of God and we're going to make it not important. We're going to still follow the Word of God. That's not what I'm meaning. And it's not even to, am I going to get involved in sin so that people could see, uh, see me come out of that? And the, the, in Romans 6, 1 says, do we sin that grace may abound? Paul says, absolutely not. So I'm not asking, will we be, do everything that the world wants? Will we become like the world so that people be saved? That's not the question. But what it does mean is we'll accommodate ourselves to people. That we're going to be able to not say, here's the box of the church. You fit inside the box. But here is the church, and we want to, to meet with you where you are, to introduce you to Jesus Christ. So that we accommodate ourselves to others. And how we should cheerfully deny ourselves. Folks, can I tell you that someone's salvation is not about me. It's about them. And that's what the Bible tells us. I shouldn't be so concerned about me. But I become concerned about those people that I'm trying to reach for Jesus Christ. So we, we should meet them. Meet them where they are. The church needs to meet people where they are. Get out of, of where we are and go to them and bring them in. We'll talk a little bit more about that on Sunday morning. But we should also fit to them. The more we become as the church reaching people, the more it's going to take on our part. Paul says, whatever I have to do, that by all means to save some. So I, I never want to get comfortable in my, in my life. I never want to get comfortable in my walk. But I also don't want the church to become comfortable. Folks, we're living in unprecedented times. We're living in times that are ch is challenging the church. But the church should not pull within itself. The church should be still going out, reaching people for Jesus with that goal. And I never want us to get comfortable. Will we do whatever is necessary to see others come to Jesus? That's the question I want. We'll be posing that throughout the next several weeks here at First Baptist West. As again, I start sharing a, a series of messages entitled, Making the Church the Place to Be. 
And I hope that you'll be joining us next Sunday morning. If you can't be here, remember we're having our small groups as well, but if you can't be here in person, then join us through Sunday school with, the, with our Zoom classes and also on our uh, live stream on Sunday morning. Now remember, it's 11 o'clock, so we want you to t- tune in with us there as well, okay? But I thank you for joining with me tonight, joining our program. We'll get back to, uh, to Kaylee here in just a moment, and uh, we'll be visiting with Ara and Philip Silkey, and so we're looking forward to that. But thank you for joining us here tonight. Let me pray with you, then we'll go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you. Thank you for loving us enough to send Jesus to down the cross for us. God, and as we leave here, I pray, Father, that this study will impact our lives. And Lord, we will answer the question, how badly do we want to see people come to Jesus? Will we make ourselves uncomfortable? Will we put ourselves out? Will we be willing as an individual and as the church to become all things to all people with the hopes of saving some? God, I thank you for our church. I thank you for the members of our church. And God, I pray that we would continue to be a force in Lawton of changing people's lives. Father, we love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, let's get back to our program, all right? See you Sunday. Well, thank you for sticking around and I hope you enjoyed our Bible study and also our visit with Jill. We had a great time with her. So now we're, we're back live and we want to introduce to you uh, Philip and Ara Silky. Now, Philip is wants to be introduced as my future co-host. That's right. I'm so, interviewing for the position. Tonight, yeah, right? Philip's interviewing for a position. Katie. He can be my uh, assistant. I think your... that position's open. <laughs> <laughs> he, wants, he, wants, he, he can be your sidekick. Is yeah, that what you want? He can be my sidekick. Okay, he can be your sidekick. Is Phil, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, we'll start negotiating your contract for next season. I'm cheaper. <laughs> there you go. That is I hope it probably won't be such a deep. I have a coupon. <laughs> uh, you have coupons? Yes, yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. And, you know, of course, uh, my, my sidekick's getting married, so who knows what's going to happen by by the summer. Oh. She may not even be interested in me again anymore with this. So. You'll probably be tired of Keith by then. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, before we get no, started, though, I do want to mention to you that she did bring up something the first time y'all met. What? That she oh, thumped you the first time. around the first time you met. Well, tell, tell him what. Tell him what you you brought up. The watermelon. That I beat you in a watermelon. <laughs> I was a gentleman and I let her win. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. Yeah. How long was she, ago was that? that was, that, I was five, like fourteen. Six, uh, yeah, like it was five, six, yeah. No, it was. We had met. Like Jake was in town. Oh, okay. Yeah. We did a okay. cookout thing. Yeah, oh, I remember that. That was one of the first things I she I said. Said, "Oh, I just got. To, I, I beat him in a watermelon eating contest." So. <laughs> I've challenged him multiple times, and he doesn't want to beat, or he doesn't want me to beat him again. So. Well, it, well, whatever y'all want to do, <laughs> just let us know. That could, be, hey, that could be one of our closing segments for our last show. We could have a I mean, rematch. Who wouldn't want to see that? Sure. Yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see it. But anyway, well, enough of that. I guess we'll actually pay attention to y'all now, that we're, <laughs> since you're watching this. Uh, but anyway, R and Philip are here with us, and we're honored to have them here to be a part of our thing. So how are things going? Just living the dream. Living the dream. All right. Uh, yes, the it, dream? it is a dream every day. She's married to me. With, with Philip, yes. <laughs> no. Yeah, there you so go. So it's amazing, all of the days. I, I bet it is. And that's why, I, that's why I wanted him to say it, and I wanted to hear it from you as well. Uh, yeah, sure. Because Philip always tells me he's living the dream. So <laughs> I know then it has to be a dream for you, too. Oh, well, sure, yes. Yeah, everything, everything. So everything going all right for y'all? Yeah, How, absolutely. How's work going? And I mean, that's fine. I mean, job security. Amen. So, as you know, Kaylee was talking about being busy. It's job security. That's right. Yeah, as long as you're busy, you know, when you're not busy, you start looking for that little pink paper coming out. Uh, that's desk, right. Right. That's why. That's why I tell everybody that asked me today. So, what are you doing? I said, I'm just hanging out collecting the check. <laughs> I mean, what, we're considered essential employees. So there you go. It's good to be essential, huh? Well, yeah, sure. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, so how long have y'all been members of First Baptist West? <sighs> I mean, my grandparents were members back when it was over across from Brockland, uh-huh. and so when we, we moved them moved over here, and I don't even remember what year the, this building opened, but I mean, I've been a member since I was saved in 1991. Oh, okay, all right. So, so, so people saw you grow up around here, huh? They That's sure right. did. <laughs> I have but, but, a whole but, bunch of 
of sweet ladies that will tell me exactly I think how forget. he was. Yeah. I think they, they forget a little bit. I don't know. Well, my, my, my question about that, and I, I wanted to ask you, because I knew you'd been here a long time, and people have watched you grow up. Has, does anyone ever come up to you and say, and remind you about when they see your boys go, oh, Philip. <laughs> yeah, they say that. I, I don't. I don't remember those events though. You don't remember quite like that. No, I, I see. I'm like, man, that's like a little R right there. <laughs> that's what he thinks. But I have lots and lots of members around who will who will back me up. That so, how long have you been? Um, well, we got married here uh -huh. back before the church was painted pretty like it is now. Uh -huh. We was not as pretty in our wedding pictures. Um, and we were married in 2003, and then after um, we left OU in 2004. Mm -hmm. Um, we moved back. When did we start coming? Know, oh, Addie was a baby. Was Addie was oh, a baby okay. when we started uh, started coming here, and so I joined after that. I okay. was a member at Cameron. Oh, okay. um, As a youth. Oh, okay. A long so, time ago. so, so when you're here, they don't get to say, "Oh, little Ara." That's no, the Ara they acted. no, they don't know. So it's all on Philip, right? It's all right? him. Yes, but I was a, a sweet angel. So, <laughs> um, and I have no you. There, you don't have anyone to dispute that story. So. Yeah. So, so that's the trouble about being around <laughs> when you were a kid, man. Everybody goes. Oh, man. Only if they knew how she is. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So, so uh, you, you've been here, and uh, where, where did y'all meet? Did y'all meet in, at, in college? Well, it's kind of a, I guess it's funny. You know, we went to junior high together. We went to high school together. Um, oh, okay. And I graduated from Eisenhower in 99, and R graduated in 2000 from Eisenhower. But we actually didn't, we ran into each other we, at, a, as a, at a high school football game and more. Uh-huh. And more. Uh, and yeah. But it was her freshman year and I was my sophomore year. And uh, we ran into each other and we went to Applebee's afterwards and we got just magic. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. She, magic she looked into these eyes and she's like, she was... It, to, for her to get, for you to get her, it had to be magic. Right? Oh. <laughs> probably, that's probably true. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't asking her out. That's it. That's <laughs> so. <laughs> So we yeah, we met in in junior high honor choir like uh -huh. that we were in varsity choir together in um, at Eisenhower Junior High back then it was junior high right. there was a purple cummerbund and a purple dress it was a terrible terrible so, situation so did y'all talk a lot in high school or did never really one time see no each other? no we weren't friends we didn't hang out not like didn't our circles didn't cross nothing wow um, that football game and more. Um, I thought, oh, you know, I'll see. I'm, I'm friends with, you know, some underclassmen, and so they'll be there. And so I went, and then uh, I didn't see anybody that I knew that was, you know, a senior that year. So um, I saw Philip, and I felt like, hey, there's somebody I know. And, you know, I went and sat, and he was with one of his fraternity brothers. And so we hung out, and then, yeah, that was, you know. So you saw him, and the rest is history. The rest is history. Love at first I'll, sight. I'll, next, next month? What month is this? October. It'll be 20 years that we've Ooh. been together. All right. Well, congratulations on that one. <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks. Ask her what day in October. I was the 22nd. I remember days occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when, on the 22nd, I'll ask her. What, what, is there some special Now, I might not know what day it is. When when you ask me what oh, day is okay. today, that I the have no idea. You know the I'll, day of. I'll, right. I'll right. tell her, hey, you want to go, go out to dinner or something tonight? She's like, well, what for? <laughs> I'm like, it's October 22nd. So, well, good. Well, all, all I know is we're glad you're here at First Baptist Thanks. West. Uh, we, we always did a, a, a kind of a segment when we started this. Every now and then we do what we called unsung heroes, and we'd have people that really do a whole lot of stuff that people don't know they did. And so, one of the things is. I mean, that's not really, I wanted to talk to you tonight about other things, but I did want to bring up some unsung heroes that you two are both that, that y'all really do an awful lot here at First Baptist oh, West. We do it for God's glory. So. Yes, and, and you do well. And okay. so I just want to say thank you. And I know our church, man, they're really excited about the things you do. And some of them probably don't even know some of the things you guys do, but you guys do a lot for us. And I know you do a lot of cooking. <laughs> uh, you know, that's one of the things, and you both help with sponsoring Yeah, you don't want me to cook things. that. It's not a good situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, then keep that, it up. Buddy. That's her excuse. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, yeah. Well, you know, last week, uh, Kate was talking about when she's advertised, talked about Jade's shower, and she mentioned that Jade wants cookbooks. And I said, why? 
She doesn't know how, Jake. Sorry, but yeah, she doesn't cook. If she does, she's hiding that one from you very well, very well. So you guys do an awful lot for us, and we appreciate that. And I know you guys are very active with uh, with the children's ministry, with the things with the youth ministry now, uh, which is kind of what I, I want to talk about, uh, that you, you guys now have stepped into a new role here at the church, and that is uh, Sunday school teachers in our youth group. What group are you are you leading now? Seventh and eighth grade. Seventh. Our own kid. Yeah. Our own kid is in our class, so that's <laughs> yeah. different. Yeah, that is. I mean, <laughs> he said one thing. He said, just don't show me any pictures of me naked. I'm like, oh, come on, why not? That's the best part. No. <laughs> Well, we can bring Philip's As a pastor, <laughs> I would recommend don't show me pictures of your Just son Just like as naked. a general policy. I, I, I'm thinking around looking in any parts of scripture and lessons of how that could be relevant. <laughs> And quite frankly, I just don't see it. Even with even with Moses in the basket, I just don't see a picture of your son naked as a part of the Sunday school. So anyway, actually, but, you know, we could Moses in the basket. You know, Parker was like nine months old. And he could, he could still fit in his Easter basket. That's how small he was. There you go. So, I mean, was, was that what the picture is of? There's what? actually no. He's, he has clothes on in the yeah, Easter yeah. basket, oh, okay. but there was a picture of him sitting in his Easter basket because he was so little. Oh well, there you go. So now that picture could be relevant. <laughs> That's okay. So I agree with your son. Don't don't show any of those pictures. But anyway, so now, now you've only done one Sunday, right? Correct. It was last yes. week. Yes. How, how did it go? Um, I, I mean, I think it went well. Yeah, I. Um, you know, it's it's different stepping into a new you know spot in ministry because I do, I was teaching the one year old Sunday school for the last while. I don't remember yeah. when I started that. Um, and I love it. I love babies. Um, and so this um, this was you know a new step for me um because i've mostly done you know preschool and children's and so right. um our lesson this sunday really spoke to me as a teacher in the class you know it was that that god knew this moment you know before time that right. who you were going to be in this room with and and that that really you know kind of sealed it for me like this is where i'm supposed to be right now this is this is where we're supposed to be serving right. um at this moment and that was you know it was really talking to the kids about um, noticing who they're around and, you know, God put you with those people in your softball right. team for a reason and, and <clears throat> with these people for a reason. So, you know, take notice of who's around you. Um, but, but in that Sunday morning moment, it was this, this is where you're supposed to be. Right. So that, um, that was really great for me, you know, this uh -huh. week. Good. Good. Well, how, how you feel about stepping into the youth I mean, Sunday I, school class? I mean, I, I have a, I have a passion for youth. I have a passion for kids. So, um, I mean, I, you know, I was teaching in the college and careers, and um, but they didn't I, like us anymore. Yeah. <laughs> didn't like you anymore. Yeah. No. They well, see, he knew they, he was taking. <laughs> he knew he was taking your position, and it was easier yeah. if he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but and I just, I just, just, wherever I can, you know, serve the love on the kids, or you know, or the youth, or whatever it is, and it's just. Wherever God wants us, we'll, we'll be there. So. Well, I know you, you've done a lot with youth as far as yeah. since I've been here. You Falls Creek and mm -hmm. different things. And I know you've gone to kids camp and all that. So uh, with stepping into the 7th and 8th grade, because that, to be honest with you, that's when I was teaching the school and then the youth ministry. But 7th, 8th, and 9th grade was my, had was where I was positioned most of the time. Now, being the youth pastor, I, I youth director, I was everything. But at school, I really focused on the 7th, 8th, and 9th graders. Man, that's a that's a kind of a tough age for the kids uh, to be transitioning into from little kids to other older groups. But what what are you hoping to be able to show that seventh, eighth, and ninth graders? Since that's, I know you're going to do the whole youth at times, but with that with that, with your Sunday school class, you know, I think just being able to to me being able as they are going into their next cycle in life you know they're starting to mature you know right. hormones things like that they're interested in more things just um getting them to focus on the relationships and on their mm -hmm. relationship with christ obviously first of all but making sure they have those um christ-like relationships in their life and if we can lay that foundation as they're starting you know middle school or junior high um, maybe it can you know they can keep that foundation as they grow into right. the youth college things like that. Right. Well, and it is important with that foundation, especially in the youth group, starting that foundation there. It builds from the next Correct. several years for them. And and I agree if they don't have that seventh and eighth grade foundation in the youth group where they develop and even learn what a youth group is about, then it's going to be very difficult to keep them 
when they get into that, especially yeah. that 10th, 11th, and 12th grade mm -hmm. years. So, yeah. so I appreciate the challenge of going in. Now, Art, what about you, with, with, especially with the ministry to the girls in that group? Um, what, I, what do you... It's such an interesting age, you know, because you're going from, you know, elementary school and, and, you know, everybody's friends and all of that. And then you move into this, this middle school, um, young teen age, and it's that all of a sudden we've got, you know, clicks and, and you're not my friend anymore and all of that. And I think this really trying to figure out who you are and who you want to be and what you're interested in. And, and I think it's so important to focus on who God wants you to be right. and not changing yourself to fit in with this crowd or with that crowd or to impress somebody, but, but really fully, um, embracing, um, who you are in Christ. And I think that that building that foundation then, um, can really help in the middle years because it, it just gets harder and harder. Um, and I think that's, it's such a, it's such an important age and it's yeah. so neat to be, it really is neat to be a part of it, mm -hmm. um, to be involved as they grow. And, and it, it's, it's an honor for me. Um, and it's, you know, I think back to, to women that may, that had a, you know, an impact on me at that age. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and how I can do that because I've, you know, I had Sunday school teachers that really did, um, care about me. They cared about what I was doing during the week. Hey, what are you guys doing? Let's go, you know, get ice cream or go right. to concerts. I got taken to so many Christian concerts um, by my Sunday school leaders that that just, it made such a big impact on who I was then and, and who I am now. And I really, um, I'm excited for the opportunity to, to be that mm -hmm. um, for this generation that's coming up. Um, and so, yeah, that's, I mean, I'm, I am really excited about it, but it's also, you know, it's a huge responsibility too, I think. It, it is. So the dynamic of getting to do it together though, how do you feel about that as husband and wife being in the same Sunday school class, leading them and working together to, to get that important ministry that you're talking about? I think, I think we're, I think we're a good pair. I mean, obviously we, we've been together 20 After years. 20 years. So, <laughs> I, Here we are. I don't I, know. I hope you're not just getting by. <laughs> Um, but I think we can balance each other out, you know, and, right. um, and even in the, even in our first week in small group, um, you know, being able to, I guess, feed off each other and, and having discussion right. with it with the, with the students, it was good. Um, so yeah, well, one of the things that we, that we thought was important, and John, when he came, began we began to talk a little more about it, was the family dynamic, mm -hmm. getting these young people to see husbands and wives. Okay families serving together. That was one of the things that John wanted to really work hard at getting was to have each of our three groups having a husband and wife team teaching in that so yeah. the kids can see the family dynamic. Because we really think, especially for the seventh and eighth and the ninth and tenth, that's really important for them to see a family. So I, I really see that it, it's going to be beneficial to have the two of you. Well, and I think it's nice, the, you know, if there's obviously if there's there's girls having issues, probably Philip's not, right, you know, exactly. going to jump right in exactly. there. But but he could say, hey, all right, you know, so and so seems to be having an issue. I noticed maybe you want to, you know, and so I think being able to to we're obviously, you know, being able to discuss it ourselves right. and pray together over these kids, I think um, will make a will make a difference. Good. Well, and that and that's what we're hoping for. We really want these kids to feel like somebody cares, mm -hmm. uh, that, that someone can model something in front of them that's going to be beneficial to them in years to come. Because that's one of the things society is not teaching. Yeah. They're not showing the family dynamic. They're not showing the husband and wife working together. Uh, and, and again, that's, a, I believe, one of the reasons we have tried to get this goal and John brought that to me and that's the goal we have. So with that in mind, as we get ready to wrap this up, uh, what, what are you hoping to accomplish through this ministry with these kids? Um, obviously, I just, we want, or I, I'm sorry, I want, I don't <laughs> want to talk to my wife, um, but I would like to see each student's, like I so said, talk about relationship, the relationship is the foundation, have their right. relation, that relationship grow, right. um, where they're not necessarily relying on friends at school that may not be Christians, but where they can put that trust in God to get them right. through that tough situation, you know? Um, something I something I know, uh, I mean, I know this is hard to believe, Harold, but I wasn't really popular <laughs> in, in junior <laughs> high school. I can't uh, believe that, man, come on. Uh, no, but, uh, but, you know, especially seventh and eighth grade, you know, 
the you know students their bodies changing they're you know they're just different yeah. I don't want to say they're awkward, but you know, yeah. each kids are different. So um, we don't want them to feel left out or unloved because they may feel like they're different. Yeah. Um, so we want them to be able to have that foundation, have that relationship where they can rely on, um, re- rely on us, rely on um, you know their fellow classmates, something like that, to get them through yeah. to, to try to you know. So, yeah. but all right, cool. Yeah. Artie, do you have anything to share with that? Um, I think just you know building the relationships that that can last you know right. as they as they mature and I think also um, really giving them an opportunity to see what the church is I think as yeah. as kids I, you know they they not that they don't ever have an opportunity to help or serve but as they grow it's important that they understand that this is their church this isn't right. their parents church this isn't their grandparents church this is their church yeah. we are the church and I think um, giving them opportunities to serve and to pour into that. So it's yeah. not just, you know, showing up and saying, well, what you got for me today? Yeah, you know, because, you, you know, is there is there donuts? Because if not, I'm not coming, <laughs> you know. Um, I think um, giving giving them um, that ownership um, right. and right. Um, having them, not, letting them know that they have a stake in it. This, you know, that they're, they're here for a reason, too. Yeah. Donuts or steak? Which one? <laughs> I'll take either one. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that, that I always say is I hear people talk about the youth being the future of the church. I, I don't believe that. I believe they're now the present right. of Correct. the church. They're part of the church now. So, Correct. well, awesome. Well, I, I know, I want you to know, I'm excited to have you all uh, as part of our church. I'm excited to have you serving in our youth ministry. I know John is feeling blessed to have you and uh, looking forward to all the things that you're going to be doing. So uh, let me take just a moment to pray over y'all and then we're going to wrap this thing up, okay? All right, Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for your blessing. God, I thank you for Ara and Philip and I thank you for their sweet spirit. I thank you for uh, the relationship they have together. I thank you for their families and Lord, how they're uh, leading their family with uh, with everything that's going on, Lord. It's, it's good to have parents that, that um, are, are solid uh, in their relationship with you first and then in their relationship with each other. And Father, I thank you that you have led them to serve in our in our youth ministry. Uh, I thank you that, uh, Lord, they are dealing with uh, uh, an age that is very important to have uh, role models laid out in front of them. And I pray, Father, that as they uh, take on this ministry, that God, you would just bless them, you would be an encouragement to them, and God, just uh, show them uh, the, the favor in their lives. And Father, we pray for our entire youth ministry, our children's and preschool ministry, and all of our ministries of First West, that God, you would just honor our efforts and bless us through that. And Lord, we'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, thanks for coming in no tonight. Thanks for, Katie, thanks for having you us. got anything to share before we close out with them? You want anything to... I mean, we miss you as our Sunday school teacher. I mean, I, I think I nailed my interview. I, I, think, I think you did. I think you did. But, Kaylee, let me just assure you, you're good. You're all right. You're going to be all right. <laughs> all right. I was just better. Anyway. <laughs> no. All right. Well, folks, hey, listen. Oh, look at that. Aspiring co-host. Aspiring co-host. <laughs> Uh, hey, folks, just let me let you know. Kaylee's in good standing with me. She she has nothing to uh, nothing to worry about. You're doing well. I'm glad to have you part of our program. No, hang in there, baby. You're doing fine. Harold couldn't, Harold couldn't do it without you. I couldn't do it without you. You make it a lot more fun. Thank you. So anyway, folks, thank you for joining in with us tonight. We hope you've enjoyed our program. Just remember, we only have two more to go, and then we'll wrap up season one. So we're excited about uh, the summer things coming to an end. Our Wednesday night Bible studies are kicking off on September the 9th. So please remember all those. And God bless you. And we hope you'll join us on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock for our, uh, for our live stream. If you can make it for our small groups or our 8 o'clock service, we'd love to see you here at First Baptist West. Remember, it's where we love God, love people, and want to see lives change. God bless you and have a great evening.